Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of No More Kids in Scientology. Hello, Marina. Hi, Amanda. Tommy C's cat. Yo, yo, yo. Miss Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Victoria. What's up, August? Burning imagery. Psych sauce. Amber Vaness, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of No More Kids in Scientology, you guys. Um, and we wanted to continue to bring up a very shady situation that happened in Australia where Jan Eastgate, the head woman of the so called Citizen Commissions of Human Rights, I mean, these people do have those names in their titles and with a straight face they pitch that they're that but miss eastgate was accused of standard operating procedure of what happens in scientology hotels and commercial buildings which is to coach children on including but not limited to lying to the police on including but not limited to blaming themselves because Scientology has very special technology where, believe it or not, if a child is essayed, it is going to be twisted, turned, and fully ensnared right back to that child. In what world can all Scientology parents stand there with a straight face, pretending and purporting that they really want to save a world while coaching one-on-one -on -one underage kids to blame themselves for being, including but not limited to, S8. I mean, if the urgency of this matter doesn't strike anyone else, then I don't know what we could possibly do. We're talking standard operating procedure. Jen Eastgate got caught doing what every MAA, so-called ethics officer. Imagine that's why we have literal Marty Rathbun on the thumbnail, because he was the deputy inspector general of Ethics, you guys. He was in charge of all the ethics officers. Top tier of the pyramid scheme, Marty Rathbun, in charge of all ethics. So I thought it's important to truly start contextualizing this because it needs to be. Scientologist John Eastgate arrested in child S controversy. So let's take a look at this and react. Back, the Church of Scientology is in damage control tonight after the arrest in Australia of one of its most senior leaders. Tom so in damage control, all right? They were in damage control. Because Jan Eastgate, one of its senior leaders, we all knew Jan Eastgate, you guys. CCHR was one of the BS so-called missions of Scientology to really end all these abuses. A front group that they used so that they could demonize all psychiatrists, all therapists. All mandated reporters. Scientologists are highly allergic to mandated reporters. Imagine that the children that end up inside of these hotels end up being cut off effectively from having any shred of mandated reporter anywhere in their lives. Tom Cruise and John Travolta are just two of the thousands who have signed up to her cause. Brian Seymour has this exclusive report. 
She is one of Scientology's top global leaders, part of the inner circle, a confidant to its top stars. Now we can reveal she has been accused of covering up child sex abuse. So a confidant. And I think this is the perfect time to actually bring up your question, Paris, because can you explain what ethics officer or ethics means in COS? I believe it has different contexts in outside world than what it means in COS. So it's basically their ethics confidant. It's the person that all Scientology people go to to confide in anything that they have done which is including but not limited to any type of breaking of the law. So Scientology pretty much rebrands anything related to law, anything related to breaking rules is all just under this euphemism blanket of ethics. And that's how they get away with literally practicing law without a license because they're in there, first of all, asking straight up asking as i've told you so many times you guys when you're asking questions including but not limited to have you committed any felony for which you have not been arrested what type of religious spiritual question is that irs commissioner because we would love to understand why children inside of a hotel get told to ask those questions of adults and yes when you get the information of the felony that the adult is self-admitting on himself against his Fifth Amendment right. It doesn't matter. You are not allowed to have a single shred of secret from L. Ron Hubbard or his protégés. So the ethics people are the ones that end up being the confidants of all the people that are paying for ethics, paying for audits paying for courses these people are paying for something they're paying for a service so ethics the service of ethics is something that they sell you inside of that hotel so it has nothing to do with ethics in fact it's literally the euphemism of the universe because again you guys everything is rebranded inside of the hotel to create a complete and utter delusional land of hotel where, yes, people are admitting to the felonies and then getting it laundered through so-called ethics officers who sit there and listen, who sit there and interrogate and ask highly explicit questions. Just remember that if the ethics officer doesn't find out that you committed a felony for which you have not been arrested, then all of a sudden, the ethics officer gets their head put on a pike. And those ethics officers are including, but not limited to minors. There was Bryn Canetta, there was Lily Brown, there was Tamara Steinig, there was Chrissy Varsenas, Alfonso Varsenas, five there that I just named all minors, all started below the age of 16. So I just named five names. I just thought of off the top of my head, five ethics officers, all of them minors, all of them presiding over adults that pay to tell children if they have committed a felony for which they have not been arrested, that pay to have a child sit there and listen to that felony, write it all down, video record it, and send it to, you know, the people at OSA to make sure that, you know, it could all be floated away or given a program to, you know, donate this and donate that. And all of a sudden they've made up the damage. So the ethics officers are the people that are in this entire laundering operation who are in the literal business of practicing law without a license. These are children that have not a shred of a clue what in the hell they're doing. They're just doing whatever they've been told to do. And they have no sense of right or wrong. We had no idea. 
these people acted like everything was so great. Everything was so legal. And yes, we do have a technology that's really going to save our world because, you know, what, it, what this woman is being accused of literally is what they're all doing. All of them are doing it. Right here in Australia. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. Tom Cruise learnt his history of psychiatry from Jan Eastgate. Last Thursday, she was in Sydney. Two detectives arrested and charged her with pervert the course of justice. Her passport was surrendered and she was released on bail. So who is Jan Eastgate and what are the allegations that led to her being arrested and charged? Jan Eastgate is the global leader of a group named the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, or the CCHR. It's based in California. It was set up by Scientology to... I mean, do you guys see these videos? It's like... Who literally puts that on a video? Because again, these were the videos being used on us, the children that couldn't be more naive, that couldn't have been more gullible, that couldn't have been more, oh, okay, well, I guess y'all are saying it. I guess y'all are very confident that this is what's going to happen because these were the images used to terrorize us from ever ending up anywhere near a mandated reporter. This is what we were told was going to happen to us. They were going to grab us. They were going to physically abuse us. They were going to literally shove us in a room. They were going to electrify us. They're going to open our brain. That's what they were saying was going to happen to us. And this is what's being shown in a so-called museum. A museum is what they purport to be. This nonprofit that Jan Eastgate was running. Wipe out the practice of psychiatry across the planet. Psychiatry is a so-called science behind the Holocaust and euthanasia and that psychiatrists set up the so, whole euthanasia campaign in the concentration camps. They went into the concentration camps and they set it up and they decided who was going to be killed. Isn't that great, you guys, that this woman is again calling Everything about concentration camps, Jan Literal Eastgate, you were setting up gaslighting concentration camps for underage children. So before you go running your mouth, blabbing about this, blabbing about that to purport that you're very like, oh yeah, I really want to help the human rights, go look at your own past woman. You were gaslighting children inside of your disgusting hotel establishments. You were literally telling them to lie. You were literally grooming them to believe that it was them that had taken part in the situation ship with that adult in the so-called out to the. So imagine that this woman is really going with, oh yeah, we really care about the Holocaust. Like this woman is setting up modern day child trafficking concentration camps and with a straight face is talking about, well, let's look at all the problems over there. Oh, look what they are doing over there. The psychiatrists are responsible for everything. Well, you're responsible for all the child trafficking. How about that? You and your little buddy, Mike Rinder and your little buddy, Marty Rathbun and your little buddy, Shelly Miscavige and your little buddy, David Miscavige and your little buddy, Angie Trent and your little buddy, Supishai Gentry and your little buddy Debbie Cook and your little buddy Sean Carino Smith and your little buddy Heather Hoff and your little buddy, I mean, who else? How many more adults do we need to name that they were doing this as a job, as a so-called job? Holding positions of power, grabbing minors and subjecting them to this with full impunity, with full knowing, with full video recording it, with full video transcribing it, with knowing exact time, place and event of when a criminal act took place in one of their hotels and commercial buildings. So in what world are we getting all of this wishy-washiness from this woman about, oh yeah, the concentration camps of the psychiatrists, you guys, we really want to stand up for that. In the late 1980s, 
Jan Eastgate was a key campaigner against the abuses carried out at Sydney's notorious Chelmsford Psychiatric Hospital. The Chelmsford patients have used us as their voice and I guess that's why we've been so persistent. A 1990 Royal Commission found 24 deaths at Chelmsford were preventable. The patients were given a cocktail of drugs and electroshock treatment. In 1988, Jan Eastgate was recognised by Scientology, awarded its highest honour, the Freedom Medal. John Travolta got his Freedom Medal in 1991. Well, and there you go, you guys. So what happened? They outed those wrongful deaths from happening. The investigation was conducted and that place was shut down. But when it comes to children being abused inside of Scientology hotels and commercial buildings, all we ever get is better luck next lifetime. Because the laws won't get applied. Because the bunch of platitudes that Australia uses to purport is a civilized country when they were the first country to provide the legal infrastructure, the legal precedent for all other courts around the world to go with the pitch that this criminal ring of child traffickers and child abusers that purport that they're really practicing what? The rhetoric of a convicted runaway felon who was literally running away with Shelly Miscavige there at 12 years old as if she wasn't a child trafficking victim herself. So in what world were the rants and ravings of a convicted felon written on a piece of paper going to really act in a way to circumvent the toothless, pathetic laws that the Australian government purports to have on the books? Because Australia, just like the United States, are countries that are running a full-blown state-sponsored child trafficking operation. Under these guys that, oh, yeah, let's get everyone to, well, believe whatever. We're not going to really intervene. Well, you know what? Intervene already. Because you know what? The children being brought in to the grips of those beliefs is who is in trouble. Not these grown adults that everybody wants to keep saving. Oh, my God, let's really sell John Travolta. He's been funding this. That's a grown adult. You got involved into this when you were an adult, you have criminal liability. You have all the liabilities of all the choices, decisions, and everything else that L. Ron Hubbard literally sold you to be doing. So, but if you're a grown ass adult, then you know what? You are responsible, no one else. And again, this man, with a special needs child, I mean, we're not even going to get into the me medical malpractice that they were doing with his own son. In 2005, Tom... Oh, yeah, but let's keep giving these deadbeat fathers awards. Nothing like giving them an award. Imagine this. This really sinks in. Scientology already knew that Jan Eastgate was the one tapped to go and tell that child to lie to the police. She was put on that mission. That's how these people work. Their crisis management operation is step one, get Jan Eastgate briefed. Step two, show her the definition of ethics. Step three, set up a meeting with the father and the mother to tell them that, you know, the child is, you know, 2D flowing an adult and now ended up also in an ethics condition. Step four, go to the house and handle the parents and the child to blame it on the child. Step five, set up an appointment with the police. Step six, make sure that the child really was groomed to lie their ass off. Make sure that they're very, very fearful of saying Scientology. Make sure they're very fearful that, you know, God forbid they end up in psychiatrist's hands as a result of speaking for themselves. So just keep that in mind. Who's gotten a big medal of whatever? John Travolta, Jenny Skate, and Tom Cruise. 
So yeah, wow, amazing examples here of humanity, what we're seeing right here. Cruz got his. I think you know that I am there for you. Between the age of about eight, seven to 11, he was molesting me. Carmen Rayner last year detailed her allegations on the ABC's Late Line program and here on Today Tonight. They've called the police on us, Carmen. What? I mean, look at that, you guys. Scientology calling the police on the victim that called them out for having gone to them. This is a child that went to them, that told them, this is what's being done to me. This is what's happening. I don't like it. I, this feels weird. This is odd. How many of us didn't even have that possibility? How many of us blamed ourselves? for having been put in that position. How many of us kids bought the pitch from these disgusting, depraved adults that sat there with a straight face telling us how you're out ethics, you are tutti flowing, you must have done something like this in another life to pull it in. That's how easy it is to convince a child that they did do something wrong for themselves. That's how fast it works. That's why these predators loved this age bracket. That's why no Scientology parent is a safe terminal for any of these kids. With the range ideas like that being pitched with a straight face, with everyone being in on it. We keep getting this from the Scientology parents. Well, you know what? I left. Uh, no, you know, you were there 30 years. You were a Scientology parent. How did, how, how did it happen that hundreds of kids ended up ensnared in these hotels? Who brought the kids? If you're a Scientology parent, put yourself in that bucket. Put yourself in that category. You exposed your child. You ensnared them. You were full knowing how depraved it was, how hardcore those hotels would get. But apparently none of you have a shred of problem with it because the year 2024 shows that there is little, little, little nothing to repudiate about what in the hell they all contributed to because they keep wanting to say, well, it's David Miscavige that really ruined the party. Well, you know what? Breaking news, Scientology parents, it wasn't David Miscavige. It was y'all who provided kids to David Miscavige. Who? David Miscavige has no kids. So who provided him and the rest of his disgusting cohorts, Scientology so-called executives, thirsty for children, thirsty for minors, thirsty for having underage slaves, thirsty AF. But who provided them? How did children get involved? If there's no parents, there's no children. Why didn't they call them back when I was 11? What do you mean? Well, why didn't they call them and tell the police to arrest the pedophile when I was 11? It Good question. Why didn't Scientology call the police? Why hasn't Scientology called the police every time they have asked that question? Have you committed a felony for which you have not been arrested? And why has Scientology decided not to call the police every single time that answer has been provided to them? Why? Why is there no records at the Clearwater Police of any investigations being done on anything? Why is there no records at the LAPD with nothing being investigated whatsoever? If we, the children, were asking adults if they committed felonies, LAPD idiots, what in the F do you think you were doing? Outsourcing underage kids to what? Do y'all's jobs like... We're supposed to get the felonies from these people to float them so you don't have that load at the LAPD to have to deal with that? I mean, it's a serious question for the LAPD and for the Clearwater Police Department and for the Australian Pathetic Police. For all of y'all at the police, why are minors being literally tapped to do y'all's jobs? Why are minors asking adults if they've committed felonies? Why is this being video recorded? Why is this being transcribed? Why is this happening? It was 1985. Carmen was just 11 years old. Her mother, Phoebe, and her stepfather, Robert, 
were both Scientologist and raising Carmen as one. At the same time, Robert Kerr was sexually abusing his stepdaughter. In an interview one year ago, Carmen alleged the role Jan Eastgate played in the subsequent investigation. The church got involved then and then they sent Jan Eastgate over to drill me and tell me to, what to say to the police and what to say to docs. Instead of... What to say to the police and what to say to doctors. I mean, again, you guys, there were, we had handlers. We had people. They were sent to literally handle us. Handle it. That's what they called it. They used the word handle. Oh, it's all handled. Oh, it's all handled. We have a Scientology handling in place. We're going to do an ethics handling. And once you do an ethics handling, everything is handled. So again, the pathetic LAPD, the pathetic Clearwater Police Department, the pathetic corrupt Australian police that outsources underage children to handle felonies from self-admitted felons. Why was that our job? Why were we being tapped as underage children to sit there and data mine self-admitted felonies out of adults? Because it would be really great to finally start understanding something that makes a shred of sense. Since, yeah, we're a little pressed that we were 12 when they got us started. Asking those questions. Drill it with a doll. Drill it with this. Drill it over here. Oh, do the drill. Do a drill. A drill and a drill and a drill. And then just go to the hotel and make sure you get paid. Make sure you have an invoice. Make sure they paid the $500 an hour for your time. That's how we were prostituted as children. That is how it happened. So for all the idiots that are still so stupid that they don't get it, let's clarify it just that simple. Why are adults buying 12 and a half hour blocks of time with underage children inside of Scientology hotels and commercial buildings? Why is that happening? Going to the police, Carmen's mother turned to Scientology and Jan Eastgate for help. Just say no. Don't say yes, because otherwise you will be taken away from your parents um, and you'll never see your family again. Mm. Carmen alleges the reason Jan Eastgate allegedly coached her to lie to the police was to protect the Church of Scientology from any embarrassment. Earlier, I mean, again, you guys said, what's that? It's going to be so embarrassing. It's going to be so bad. God forbid the technology of L1 Hubbard is jeopardized because we really need a technology from L1 Hubbard to really save our world. So by all means, Scientology parents start typing up how that makes a shred of literal sense. Why were children's innocence exploited, sacrificed at the altar of your delusion? Why did that happen, Scientology parents? Why did that happen ad nauseum? Why did that happen systemically? Why was that institutionalized? Why are you all implicated in the same literal crime, in the same type of felony? Why are you all ensnared in that trafficking ring where you provided your children to be abused, where you saw no red flags, even though you were in on the operation, you were in having eyeballs inside of the hotel. You were exposing yourself to audits. You were exposing yourself to ethics handlings. You were exposing to yourself to the grooming courses. So in what world are you going to really sit there and pitch that you have, oh, I had no idea that that happened. Oh, I, I didn't know that was done. Today, we contacted Jan Eastgate through her lawyer to offer her the chance to respond to this story. So far, we've heard nothing back. We also contacted the Citizens Commission on Human Rights and the Church of Scientology. Again, so far, no response. Yeah. What are they going to say? 
what are they going to say? There's nothing to say. They do this to all the kids. But the corporate media loves missing the withhold of these people because they have no idea how to investigate, because they have no idea how to pull strings, because they don't give an F. Imagine these lazy reporters, all they do is, okay, get a camera over here, makeup, okay, great, makeup, okay, great. So what happened to you? Uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, great, okay, let me, let me go talk to Scientology, okay, one second. So they say this, okay, all right, guys, that's, that's it, that's enough. Our advertisers are going to pay us a lot of money. Uh, breaking news, you guys, one person told us one thing over here, and this person said that it didn't happen. Have a great day, and yay. That's the investigations that you can literally expect from the grifting, pathetic, trying to enrich themselves, having no backbone, having no spinal cord, having no eyeballs, having no brain cells apparently available to, you know, again, pull the string. Why? Why is an 11-year-old claiming that this high-ranking executive that is literally running the Citizen Commissions of Human Rights In what world is the head of the Citizen Commissions of Human Rights sitting down with an 11-year-old child to tell them to lie to the police because they don't want to embarrass themselves? Just really ask yourselves that. The man who abused Carmen, her stepfather, Robert Kerr, turned himself in to police in 1999. Carmen Rayner... Well, and there you go, you guys. The literal abuser turned himself into the police. Just so you guys really start to understand the pattern of corruption from prosecutors, from police officers, from Australia's corrupt of corrupt. Because let's not forget, all of these charges were dropped magically. Oh, we had a technicality problem. Never mind. Better luck next lifetime. Janiske, you're free to go. Bye bye. Let's not forget that was the outcome of how this so-called investigation happened. So here you have the literal perpetrator turn themselves in to the police. But we cannot make a case. We cannot pull a string. We cannot find out if other kids are actually in harm's way. Because, oh, that would just be too hard. Too hard for prosecutors in Australia to do a shred of heavy lifting. They expect the children that are child trafficked and snared in despicable, disgusting conditions to, you know, carry the weight. Because that would be a great idea for all children in America and Australia to keep carrying that weight because the prosecutors in these countries don't give a literal F. You can rot you can sit there. You can continue asking people if they've committed felonies for which they haven't been arrested because you know what? You're actually doing them a solid. The more felonies that get laundered inside Scientology hotels, the less the prosecutors have to carry their weight in the real cities where they purport to literally be all about the law and order except to enforce a shred of law. Because... Bingo, you guessed it. The same thing that happened here happened over here with Miriam Francis, another Australian kid that was being abused by her literal father who was literally caught on tape admitting to what he did. But no, there is no case that will get built. Because kids are being expected to rot in their literal hell, which is what these courts of these countries have upheld, is a very religious environment, all the while playing dumb under this pretense that, oh, God forbid, we look at a religious text and evaluate it for ourselves. You idiot. How stupid can all of you be? How gullible and naive and dumb can you all be at once? 
all at once. I mean, imagine all of them are stupid, idiotic, have no critical thinking skills, cannot actually pull a string and find a fact. It's like, oh, damn, L. Ron Hubbard wrote here that you could do what with a child? Oh, no, religious, 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 can't have an opinion, can't think about it. Because, so yeah, separation of church and state. So yeah, if you want to run a full-blown child trafficking racketeering hotel scheme, then start going to the IRS and start applying for that license. Because guess what? It will gain you all the insulation you need. In any country, like try it, just open up a whole worldwide operation. Go to any country you want. Because there's already precedent, legal precedent from all these countries falling like dominoes, like complete idiots. Oh, well, Australia did it. Okay, well, I guess, okay, I guess it really is a legal precedent. Now, has always maintained one reason she spoke out was to encourage others to tell their story. A call echoed by federal independent senator Nick Xenophon. Given what has occurred, the only fair thing to say is that if anyone has information about this case or any other matters, they should go to the police and give a statement so that the police have all the available information. Imagine how badly the statement of a platitude has aged in the year 2024. Imagine that plenty of us have already gone to the police. Plenty of us have already put the statement in. Plenty of us have already spoken out, only to be met with nothing. Only to be met with excuses, only to be met with BS, bogus technicalities about, oh, well, you know, we really should have figured it out when it was happening to you, because that's very consistent with how trauma is processed in the brain of kids, which is when this abuse was being done to us. So imagine that it's all we ever get. Oh, yeah, but you know what? Better luck next lifetime. Next lifetime really like really, really go and try, you know, to have better luck because you know what? It'll be great. So here we go back to reacting to Mike Rinder, how this all ties up to Mike Rinder is because they're going to literally go over this case. So let's see what he says. There is a dreadful irony in the title of that organization. Oh. <laughs> Representing human rights and persuading a girl to withdraw an accurate report. I mean, again, Mike Rinder, ha, ha, ha. This is not funny. This is very, very not funny whatsoever. Citizen Commission of Human Rights, you know damn well what that organization is and does. Um, Carmen's stepfather has since confessed and been convicted for this offense. So there is or this long series of offenses. So there is no doubt. Um, what has been suggested by Miriam Francis is that you were involved in some way in, uh, you briefed Jan Eastgate or you wrote the manual that Jan Eastgate worked from to convince um, Carmen to retreat. And I mean, you guys just take a look at his body literal language because I think it's, it's everything her statement. Let's also say that the Australian Royal Commission took evidence from Carmen, found that evidence a substantial. Scientology has paid absolutely nothing in compensation nor made any admission of its guilt in covering this up. Um, Jan Eastgate walked away from prosecution because the law under which she was being prosecuted did not exist in 1985. That's the only reason. Um, right. We have done a trawl of the documents. I have talked with with Carmen Rayner. There is no document, and we're still, you know, there's still somebody looking through documents. But as yet, your name is not mentioned in any of the documents in the Carmen Rayner case. Um, so, my understanding is, and again, Miriam Francis has said you told me that in 1985, at this time, you were an L. Ron Hubbard personal public relations officer. You did not run. The, the the case involving 
Okay, you guys. So this is important because Mike Rinder goes, he did not run the Office of Special Affairs, but let's just go to Wikipedia. The Office of Special Affairs, formerly the Guardian's Office, is the Department of the Church of Scientology International. According to Scientology, OSA is responsible for directing legal affairs, public relations, public relations, Mike Winder. Public relations go hand in hand. You've always been that bitch. You've always been the one that was handling the public relations. According to what? What could flap the most? What could be the biggest problem in the literal world? So yes, sometimes you literally held that hat where you were literally the point person directing the crisis management crisis management are us is all y'all did and that's why you have no plausible deniability because in order to handle a crisis guess what you need data in order to handle the crisis guess what you need access to the information that was being fed to your office and given the fact that your office was the top tier highest level of having to handle PR flaps. Let's see if you really say that you were part of it or not. Part of the handling of this. The Office of Special Affairs or, or any, any of the things. She has come back and said, well, in your book, you say that you were an L. Ron Hubbard personal public relations officer in 1990, as if that somehow contradicts the possibility of you having had the job at another time so no john atac it's not that what you don't get is that if you are in the lrh ppro office you are doing osa's dirty work you're laundering the image of the flap you're covering it up you're scheming and scamming and figuring out step one, two, three, four, and five on how a literal flap, as they called it, that was a code name. Oh, this is a flap. And if it was this magnitude, then it would be called a Hill 10. So they had all manner of code names. Oh, this is a big Hill 10. Send it to the, LR, the LRHPPRO network to advise on how to handle this flap Hill 10 that we have here because we want to make sure that our seniors know exactly what's going on. Because if you don't tell your seniors what in the hell's going on and they find out about it and then they, they find out that you were withholding this, they will have your literal head on a pike. So whether he was OSA or LRHPPRO is the same shit with a different air freshener. So, um, let's just put the question directly. Did you have any involvement in the Carmen Rayner case? Abs no, absolutely none. I knew nothing about that case. And... Oh, Mike Rind, are you literally are giving Prince Andrew vibes right about now. Oh, no, absolutely not. I didn't know anything I knew about this case. I knew about John Eastgate. And so did everyone else. When this happened, it was a flap. When this happened, word was spread about it but you always know nothing. And again, it's, it's literally how you literally deny it that's giving off the Prince Andrew vibes right now. Let's look at it again, how he denies it, you guys. And look at his body language, by all means. Absolutely none. I knew nothing about that case. And... Absolutely not. You knew nothing. 
nothing about that case, Mike Rinder? Nothing? Nothing. Like zero. Like, why were you so looped out? What happened that you were so out of the loop? Because, you know, this was a big deal. Every time a child had an out duty inside of those hotels, it was made a big deal. Crisis managers that you all were. It's your record speaks for itself, Mike Rinder. How many children were essayed inside of those hotels relative to how many children have had a shred of justice? Oh, look, record shows nothing. Not a single one child has gotten a shred of justice. So what type of crisis management operation were you really running to ensure that not, not a one You know, this this is a part of the problem um, that arises and why I made a comment at one point about, you know, it's virtually impossible to prove a negative yeah. because people will say, well, you were the head of the Office of Special Affairs, so you obviously must have known what was going on. Mm -hmm. And those people actually don't understand how uh, things work in the C organization, but more particularly even in the Office of Special Affairs and more particularly in the world of David Miscavige. Oh, yes, Mike Rinder. You're just so misunderstood by people that don't know how it works because it can work in what type of literal way. There was an OSA report written every Thursday, Mike Rinder. That OSA report included for the person to write down were there any flaps or legal problems that came up this week? Typing, typing, this happened, this happened with this child, this happened with this other child, this happened with this minor here, this happened with that other minor there. In what world are you running? Let's go back to Wikipedia. Let's literally go back to this. Because it says, some observers have characterized the department as an intelligence agency, comparing it variously no, voraciously to the CIA or the KGB. In what world are you the top dog of a KGB-like operation and you are being kept in the dark? Because that would be a much more interesting question for you to literally answer right about now. Because again, your little pyramid KGB Herbalife, wannabe, multi-level marketing, wannabe, saving a world, wannabe 501c, wannabe child trafficking ring. At that structure where everything is being filtered upwards and guess what determines if it got to you or not. How big of a flop it could be how much of a legal potential liability that flap had. But apparently, you always were looped out of all the flaps to do with kids. Because what? You weren't aware that that was a legal problem? How were you so looped out, my Grinder? How were you so in the dark? How were you so clueless? How were you so willfully playing dumb today go fronting stop fronting stop capping um i knew nothing about common rainer and as i knew nothing about the i mean again you knew nothing <laughs> like 
You knew nothing. You didn't even know she existed. Literally just didn't even understand. Like you were shocked when you saw this because it's the first time you ever hear about it. Because what? You're relying on the corporate media to come tell you what your flaps are? You, Mike Rinder, are relying on the corporate media to come and inform you and loop you in. This is really how it works. Your relationships, your cozy relationships that you have with the media allow you to do what exactly, Mike Rinder? The activities that are now the, the source of the potential prosecution of Miriam's father. Hmm. They, they just were not things that ever came across my plate. And ever were not things that ever came to your plate. I mean, in what world are you handling the PR of these people? In what world are you the literal L. Ron Hubbard personal relations officer? Then you were the WDC OSA. Did you forget? That when you were put in that position, Mike Rinder, you had a whole entire gamut of juniors underneath you and that you were responsible for your juniors as the top dog of the operation. Or are you just forgetting that? Is that just like glitching in your head? Because it's giving Prince Andrew convenient senilism, like you're literally playing senile now. Oh, no, nothing like that ever came across my desk ever. Nothing like that. Imagine we already have the receipts that shit like that came to your desk all the time. Imagine you already have in your own documents your part on the oversight that you played over that actor that was also found to be doing gross criminal things with underage kids. And in that case, you were looped in. So isn't that great? You sometimes get looped in and then sometimes don't get looped in and you just conveniently get looped in in whatever way you need to be looped in. Well, unfortunately for you, that's not how the looping in happened inside of those hotels, Mike Rinder. And we would know, those of us that would know how it runs, so you can stop pretending that everyone is so ignorant and dumb on the outside because they don't know how it works and it's just so sophisticated. Y'all were the cheapest, most disgusting, most corrupt, most doing it all on purpose, most documenting it all with a comma and a T and everything. And that's what your problem is. Your problem is that you documented it. The problem is that you were expecting reports to be written to you about the situation. Your problem is that you were ordering people to video record it. Your problem is that you were selling programs to float it away. That's your problem. Your problem is not that you weren't looped in. Your problem is you were looped in up to your neck and ears. And now you're there pathetically lying your ass off because I guess it's very inconvenient for you to realize this now in hindsight. In hindsight, you're like, well, you know what? I don't want to know. I, I had no idea. No idea about nothing. And people say, well, that's not possible. You know, there's all these reports that get written in the Office of Special Affairs. and There's all the reports that you literally leaked on yourself about you already doing stuff like this with people. And yes, we don't have your entire collection, Mike Rinder. Imagine that Scientology does. Imagine the leverage Scientology has on you, Mike Rinder. Imagine that all your writings, all your handlings, all your directives, all you doing criminal activities with them they do have that inside of those hotels. You know, Scientology is a is a, an immense um, an immense conglomeration 
of people and organizations all over the world. And I mean, yuck. You can't, you don't even know what to say. You're just blabbing and grabbing words to make you sound intellectually dishonest, I guess. I mean, it's just giving intellectual dishonesty conglomerate of a lot of... Scientology is a bunch of disgusting hotels and commercial buildings where you and the rest of your cohorts, adults, grown, full-grown adults that you all were, went around recruiting minors and ensnaring them in what you all thought was really going to save a world. Well, breaking news to you, you were never saving a world by enslaving kids. You were never saving a world, my Grinder, by perverting justice. You don't save a world like that. So if that wasn't clear to you, let's make sure that's clear to you now so that you don't just play dumb and play dense. And there are a lot of people uh, and a lot of situations and problems that arise with Scientology every single day. I mean, they've got problems. Well, you know, there's all these reports that get written in the office. Oh, well, that was a cut from them. So imagine what type of cut they did. So, yeah. Mike Rinder continue to try to make this look so confusing. You know, there's a lot of problems there all the time. Problems everywhere. Yeah, but you know what we did with those problems, Mike Rinder? You know what we did with those problems, Mike Rinder? We were video recording it. You know what else we did with those problems, Mike Rinder? They were getting transcribed. So, yes, it was a full-blown data mining operation. It was KGB on crack and steroids. So as much as a lot of stuff was going on, a lot of stuff was getting reported to y'all. The special affairs and, you know, Scientology is, a, is a, an immense, um, an immense conglomeration of conglomeration. Is that even a word, you guys? Conglomeration. Imagine trying to call a child trafficking hotel a conglomeration. Of people and organizations all over the world. And there are a lot of people uh, and a lot of situations and problems that arise with Scientology every single day. I mean, they've got problems everywhere, all the time. And to yeah, but they have problems everywhere all the time that get put in little different categories. Hill tends at the top of the list. Flaps second. Situations third. Out points fourth. So in what world was essaying a kid not a Hill 10 situation where everybody's being looped out because nobody wants to know anything because why? Because the public record is going to show us that, that y'all were so careless with it that so many kids got justice because nobody was checking on it. I mean, you literally, the, the headline is Jan Eastgate was caught literally grooming a child to lie. And again, this wasn't just Jan Eastgate. This is standard operating procedure inside of the hotels. Who else did that? Oh, yeah. Miranda Scoggins, another ethics officer at a celebrity center that did the same thing with the Jane Doe's when they went and reported their shit. Who else did that? Oh, yeah. Julian Schwartz. Another ethics terminal that was literally the, the broker of felonies for these people. So in what world are you really saying that, that nothing is handled and everything is so confusing? Scientology is everything but confusing. Everything is written down. Everything has process. Everything has dates. Everything is video recorded. Everything is transcribed. 
Where is your plausible deniability, Mike Rinder? You were there for decades. To think that that one person could know about and be involved in directing all of these activities everywhere in the world is is pretty it's a fact that's who you were that's how it works in intelligence so you have all your intelligence assets under here in the pyramid scheme and guess what they do every day send you info send the info where's the info being sent it's not just being sent randomly to just anybody it's being sent to who my crinder to you to the di director of inspections and reports to debbie cook captain of the flag service organization the senior inr the security chief the chief staff maa the chief public maa the chief student maa the deputy inspectors of reports the hco chief the has how many more names do we need to name you so that you start to refresh your memory on just about how many people were reporting shit to you? Floating all the way up to the top. Watchdog committee, as if your literal name was not Watchdog. And you did that job for decades. So where is your you didn't know anything and you had no idea about anything. So what in the hell did you do all day then? She, um, uh, far-fetched. Yeah. It, it just didn't happen like that. And far-fetched is your lies, Mike Rinder, because it ha exactly happened like that. Were criminal acts not video recorded in sessions? Were criminal acts not video recorded in, NOJ, in A to J interviews where people were being asked, have you committed a felony for which you have not been arrested? So where do you think I would send that information when I would get an admission from someone coming to get serviced at the B. Cook's Hotel? Send it to OSA. Send it to OSA, send, send all the info, make sure you type it, make sure you write it, make sure you get the time, the place, the form, and the event. Make sure you pull all details. If you missed anything, we will have your head on a literal pike. So make sure you really don't miss anything by the time you report this to us at OSA. You know, the, I've had people, uh, even journalists, like the wonderful Peter Reichelt, who has, has written some amazing stories in Germany about Gottfried Helnwein and other things. And he reaches out to me routinely and says, Mike, can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about that? And I'm like, Peter, I'm sorry. I just didn't know anything about that. Well, how could you not have known about Gottfried Helnwein and this politician in austria that he was trying to to uh you know he had a meeting with him and this and that i'm like i'm, I'm sorry that just when when that all right so yes maybe you didn't know anything about austria but you know what was different about that little thing that you didn't know mike rinder is that it didn't happen at a service org so fine. Maybe you weren't so much into the president lines. Gottfried Hellwein was floating around in Austria and doing whatever in the hell he was doing. Fine. Maybe you didn't know about Gottfried Hellwein in Austria. But kids that were in the Sea Org that were S8, kids that were public that were S8, what type of handlings were put in place by you and the rest of your co-conspirators to block off the information, to pervert justice, to purport that y'all had a way to really fix it with a technology that you were selling inside of those hotels. 
So by all means, give us another false platitude of denial that has nothing to do with anything. No one's saying that you should know what Gottfried Helwin was doing in Austria. No one's expecting you to know that. That was going on. I was in Clearwater on the Lisa McPherson case. There you go. Thank you. You were in the Clearwater Lisa McPherson case. Much bigger flap. So whatever in the hell was going on with Hellwine, yeah. Guy in Austria. Hellwine didn't ever raise any literal red flags. They were a wealthy family of celebrities in Scientology. They were catered to their every whim. They were treated as if they were royalty. They had handlers all over the place. The president's office was their permanent babysitter. There was not much for you to be doing there. But, you know, you were real busy covering up another literal murder. I mean... And, you know, Kurt Weiland was dealing with those matters. That wasn't my thing. And I... Kurt Weiland and you, Mike Rinder. Let's just refresh your memory. When you're the head and you have a deputy, guess what the deputy has to do? Keep you in the loop. Part of the power formula, remember pink legs, let the executive know, don't loop out the executive, keep him in the loop, keep him groomed, keep them CC'd. Y'all loved CCing each other. If you look at all of these reports, CC this, CC this, CC this, CC this, CC this. It was part of the BS like, oh, I'm really writing a big report. Let me CC the world. It was part of their self-importance button that they were being CC'd because they thought, oh, I'm so important to really receive this information right now. I wasn't even allowed to have any briefings from anybody outside that would, quote, distract me from dealing with the Lisa McPherson case. Yeah, but that's the case you always bring up to purport that you never had a clue about anything. So imagine if that's really the case, then why in the hell are you not literally then going to the authorities in Florida and saying what you were really actually doing when you were on the Lisa McPherson case? What you and Marty Rathbun were doing, what type of shredding was Laura being made to do to pervert the justice in that case? I mean... I mean, imagine being so desperate that you go, oh, I didn't know anything about the minors being essayed because I was too busy covering a murder. Case. And when I was the LRH Post PRO, the one thing that I always did throughout my various different positions in Scientology was when there was major international media, I would be called upon to go and deal with it. Mm -hmm. Major international media. That's right. The Today Show, when, you know, 60 Minutes, when whatever, like big stuff. Mm -hmm. The New York Times. Yeah, we get that you are a power publicist. No one is questioning that, my grinder. You're nothing but a publicist. You've been wielding your little publicist powers. You've been wielding all of those connections you made when you were there covering up criminal activity to now launder your image and rehab you back to, yeah, really going to save another world out here by blabbing, by shoving a ton of altered importance on the airwaves so that everyone gets very confused about what the problem is by continuing to bring up altered importance things that have nothing to do with kids, something that you have no conscience about. Or apparently you were so looped out, you never knew anything about any child. It's like, oh my God, you have no idea I was prohibited from getting distracted. I would be called to do it. But I, I you know, and and I was for that reason, sort of always identified with the external affairs of Scientology. Oh, here comes your whole pitch about, oh, I was very external, you guys. I had no idea about the insights. B literal S.
You don't get to be the top of the watchdog committee and you're completely clueless and looped out as to what is going on in the organizations. Again, every week there was a report written at the flag service organization with all the miners that were essayed that week. Let's just start with that fact right there. So as much as you want to claim that you were so stupid and dumb and external and had no shred of a clue, well, you know what? There was a report done every week. Flaps and handlings. Any, any possible legal flap? Any possible problem that could lend us into any legal problems? Oh, here, let me type it up. Let me put time, place, form, and event of all the info we've been receiving at the ethics department. HCO FSO sent a report to your literal office, CC'd you. That's what it was called. It needs to go uplines. Uplines means that the people at the OSA office here saw it. Then the people of the, at the IXU side. Then the people at the OSA that are that side. And then the blah, 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 that side. And then that, 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 that side. And then that watch, watch dog committee here. Everything gets sent uplines. So in what world were things not sent up lines now in your revisionist AF history where you purport to be a complete bumbling idiot when you're not, you're not a bumbling idiot. You know exactly what you were doing then and you know exactly what you're doing right now. Yeah, because I was very publicly the face and spokesperson after David Miscavige decided that Heba Gench was no longer going to be the talking head for Scientology. Mm -hmm. So even though I may have been the commanding officer of CMO International or the LRH Purse Bureau International or a book editor or in the whole, I was always still pulled away from whatever it was that I was doing to go do media. And it makes it appear to everybody or anybody or can be turned out turned into the appearance that i was always involved in all the things that were going on in scientology with respect to external affairs mike rinder let's explain to you again how these organizations work because it looks like you have complete and utter Amnesia. And yes, if L. Ron Hubbard wouldn't have trained us as an interrogator when we were 12, yeah, we would have bought your pitch right about now. But let's just really tear it apart with all the out points you just blabbed out of your mouth. It's really like actually put it in simple AF terms. All Scientology organizations do what, Mike Rinder? Audits. All Scientology organizations do what? Mike Rinder, tailor made sec checks. All Scientology organizations do literally what? Mike Rinder, ethics handlings. What happens when you audit, when you sec check, when you do an ethics handlings? What type of reports are literally drawn up after the blackmail is collected, KGB style? Where does that go? Where does that go? Because you're just sitting there thinking that, oh, yeah, you know, I was off to wherever in the hell the mainstream media was that was really going to get a quote from you. And then what? You didn't have your in-basket, remember? In-basket. Didn't you have an in-basket, Mike Rinder? In-basket. It was like this, you guys. They have an in-basket, pending basket, and out-basket. And this is why all of these executives got so many reports. You see? Because all it took is for someone to say, CC Mike Rinder, and then the internal communication system that they developed for themselves to make sure that the FBI never tapped it and to make sure nobody grabbed any of the highly incriminating information that were passing around between themselves, turns out... I mean, we never understood why it was like, oh, very confidential, you guys. Everyone was running around pressed about how confidential everything was. Well, yeah, no wonder everything was so confidential. It was all highly illegal AF. All your admissions were on paper. 
All your criminal stuff was being reported to all of you. Not just you, Mike Grinder. Not just you. Kristen Catano, too. Kathy True, yes. Debbie Cook, yes. Marty Rathbun, yes. Claire Headley, yes. Tupiche Gentry, yes. Angie Trent, yes. Jenny DeVocht, also. I mean, the, the CCs would go for like this, you guys. CC this one, CC that one, CC this one, CC this, 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 this. And these are reports that you're getting from public. These are reports you're getting from staff. These are reports you're getting always at all times in your in basket. So all of this was, regardless of where you were flying, you still had to come back and do your in basket. So imagine that, yes, you're literally relying on the fact that no one knows what in the hell an in basket is. Nobody knows how literally crazy you all were about oh the in-basket really needs to be handled and it's one of the things that an executive does goes through his whole entire in-basket all of these dispatches you have to like write it down initial it circle it answer it that just isn't the case and you know that is totally the case it it when you were talking about miriam I, um, the one thing that I had done with respect to Miriam that I felt so terrible about was I was the person that brought Miriam's mother to the United States. Thank you. So you are the child trafficker. So at least you admit to one thing. Finally, Mike Rinder, you, Mike Rinder are Miriam's Debbie Cook. You're the one that ensnared the mother to bring brought here. You're the one that did that. Debbie Cook did that to me. You didn't do it. Debbie Cook did. So we all have our own personal story of our own personal child trafficker. So you should be feeling really bad about that because none of this would have happened to her had you not done that. Child trafficking a child across from another country, that's already a criminal act. So check that up in the law. Go Google it. Check out statutes of limitation for child trafficking underage kids and see the type of statutes of limitation on that type of criminal act. I brought her because she was a... a I brought her because... Shut the F up. Who cares why you brought her? Who literally cares? A very... Um, well-known and lauded portrait artist. Hmm. She's a she's a fine artist, a painter, and I was charged with the job of updating the what is Scientology book hmm. as the LRH Purse Puro in, and doing Elvin Hubbard's what PR. Who's laundering the image of Elvin Hubbard? Who's laundering the image of what y'all are doing inside of the disgusting, despicable hotel, Mike Rinder? You. You are. And Miriam's mom, yes, she could draw. Yes, she could do that. She was no special artist. She was no, you know, museum acclaimed anything. She was a mother and she had children that you ripped away from their house. One of those children still stuck in the Sea Org. So thanks to you, thanks to you, the child trafficking is still alive and well. Thanks to you, there's still a child slave and snared inside of that hotel. I don't know if you remember, John, in the original What is Scientology book, the paintings of the life of L. Ron Hubbard are are laughably, Wonderful. laughably amateurish at best. And I was looking for a Scientologist who had the skills to be able to do decent paintings. Hmm. And that was why Kerry was brought to the int base. Okay. And I had no idea at the time that she was being brought there that anything was going on with her father hmm. or, or Kerry's husband. husband. And, and in fact, Carrie says she didn't even know about it until whenever it is the, the, the infamous affidavit that I supposedly withheld from 
from Miriam. Supposedly. And the mom didn't know anything about that, Mike Winder. Double check that pitch. Um, and I felt like really, really bad about that. And when Miriam came to Los Angeles, I, I apologized profusely to her. And when she started talking to us about what had happened, it was Leah and I that stopped the production. We okay. shut down production and we said to Miriam and, and the other woman who I won't even name, but the other woman that was on that program, because the two of them were there together talking about their childhood sexual assault experiences. Um, we said, we, you need to report this. this. This can't go unreported. And we contacted the LAPD. And we arranged for the detectives to come to the set. And we shut down the set. And I, I you shut down the set and you also posted and doxed their entire police investigation on your blog, Mike Rinder. So you felt so bad. You literally are the reason that Miriam got child trafficked into the United States. And you felt so bad that you really had to dox her entire police investigation on your stupid, disgusting blog because you really feel really bad, right? You feel so bad that whatever. At, so, a, at an enormous cost, let's, you know, a, a production yeah, set, this, with all of the people working on it, that's tens of thousands of dollars being pushed and, aside. Again, John Atak, total altered importance. Did you not get the part where their entire show was being run on the backs of victims, which they purport they really want to help? So in what world are you bringing, oh, aren't you so nice to have stopped production? I mean, seriously. And, and um, we, Leah and I, briefed the detectives and um, then allowed them to do their interviews. Mm -hmm. We briefed them of, sort of on the history of Scientology and why we were the ones that was were calling them. Imagine you briefing the LAPD on the history of Scientology. If you're anywhere like you are right now, camouflaging everything, pitching everything as an altered importance, whitewashing all of your involvement, putting arm's distance length between everything and you, did you tell them that you child trafficked her by chance? Did you tell them that you were part of the operation to get her here? Did you also tell them that she didn't have a green card? She didn't have American anything to be working in the United States. Did you also tell them that she wasn't paid as a child? Did you also tell them that, Mike Rinder? Or did you forget to tell them that because, you know, you were very facing outwards and not having a shred of clue about anything. Um, and, and that detective that we originally spoke to on that day is still the detective working this case to this day. Hmm. I spoke to him last week and he said, do you know that that, that day is seared in my memory? For two reasons. One, it is the first time we have ever been called to a set to interview people who were being interviewed. Mm -hmm. But he's what? The first time you ever get called to a set? Are you kidding me, Mike Rinder? Are you literally MF kidding me? In what world do you think that the LAPD has never in the history of his entire liter? Do you know how many studios exist in this literal city, Mike Rinder? He said, more importantly, it struck me and it has remained with me since that day that those two women did not understand that they were truly victims.
How pathetically condescending can you possibly be, Mike Rinder? It was enough that we were essayed as kids. It was enough that we blamed ourselves for it. It was enough that we bought all the pitches of how you all twisted it to make it about ourselves, the ones that actually duty flowed, the ones that actually created a violation of the ethics, the ones that actually were very low tone and therefore that. But then to say that, that you don't know that you're in a, why were they there to talk to you about what? What were you discussing in the interview? In what world did they not know? In what world are you trying to be the, what? Are you the savior? And that it, had it not been for you and Leah, this case would never have even started. Well, imagine that the case went nowhere. And had it not been for you not doxing the entire police investigation, what type of that type of sabotage are you literally involved in, Mike, literal render? In what world are you, you know, really feeling sorry for having trafficked Miriam and her underage brothers that were so young when you nabbed them? And then you dox her entire police investigation. With her name, with her address, with everything. Nothing redacted. Just the whole entire thing there, the document. Everything, everything. Because they did not understand what really had happened to them and that they were victims. Well, imagine that the reason, the only possible reason they couldn't have understand what happened then is because you and the rest of your disgusting croonies would have relabeled it out to the, would have relabeled it, oh, it's an ethic situation that can get handled. Oh, Miriam, your dad already had a floating needle, so, you know, get over it. So you're the reason that they thought they weren't victims. And imagine the LAPD Yet again, stupid idiots that they are, go to Mike Rinder and go, if it wasn't for you calling us to a set, please. And it, it is heartbreaking to me at this point to, to be um, accused of having tried to prevent this prosecution in some way. Aren't you the heartbroken man? Do you even have a heart? Because you should just double check on that. Based on your entire experience, based on all your adult choices, based on the fact that you were there for decades watching kids get abused and condoning it, as if you didn't child traffic your own children, Mike Rinder. As if you didn't normalize that. As if you didn't even have a chance to leave Scientology, become a father again, watch your kids grow right before your eyes, watch the entire developmental process that you did miss when you had your own kids inside of the Sea Org. And you know what? Apparently, it doesn't restimulate any type of withhold for you. Because apparently, you don't think that it is a crime that you were abusing kids at an industrial size scale, Mike Rinder, not one or two. You're responsible for thousands of them getting ensnared. Who got the IRS approval, Mike Rinder? Who dug L. Ron Hubbard out of his grave? You, Dave, and disgusting Marty Rathbun. But yeah, you're very heartbroken. Please. <laughs> it, it, you know, I understand it. I understand the the trauma and you know the damage that this sort of abuse inflicts on people, and I do not wish it on anyone. No. And I understand. 
were clear-headed AF, Mike Rinder. So you wouldn't begin to understand what it feels to be violated as a child, given that you didn't have that experience. So stop bullshitting yourself and telling us that you really understand what it feels to be violated as a child. That didn't happen to you. Lucky enough, you were 18 by the time you got inducted to the disgusting hotel. But yes, we were literally essayed at nine, essayed at 12, essayed at 14, essayed at 13, essayed at 15, essayed at 17, essayed at 18. And you will never know what it feels like because you were not a child being essayed. So that's why you're so playing dumb and pretending that you do know and pretending that, oh, you know, they're so damaged because they've been because of what happened to them. And I wouldn't wish that on my what you wouldn't wish that you had a whole hotel where you were literally laundering that day in and day out. In what world can you speak from every last orifice of your body, Mike Rinder? Because that would be great to really start understanding how you can speak from every last side of your mouth and pitch whatever Sure story you want to pitch to launder your image. The stand that it can, that it can, um, you know, mess people up pretty badly. And I know. Oh yeah. We're just so messed up. Mike Rinder. We're so messed up badly. You know what we're not messed up on? The facts. You know what we're not messed up on at all? Our timelines when those violations and felonies took place. You know what we still have access to? That. You know what has been done about it? Nothing. You know what type of guardrails have been instituted in the disgusting organization that you were part of for decades? None. Do you know how much you've repudiated having been doing that to children at an industrial size scale? Nothing. Because apparently, thanks to the LAPD detective, you're some sort of hero. And the first person to ever call the LAPD to a set. I mean, pfft. I, I don't want to be accused of saying that I believe that Miriam is messed up. You know, it, it's so difficult to talk about. Well, she's not. So I don't know why you're lying about that because she's not messed up. The one that's messed up is you. The one that has no moral compass whatsoever is you, Mike Rinder. The one that is lying through your teeth is you, Mike Literal Rinder. You and the rest of your buddies. You and Marty Rathbun and Angie Blankenship and Debbie Cook and all the other disgusting executives that are out there on the sidelines playing the victim. Imagine you child traffic an industrial size scale of kids and snare them in a scam. And then you just go, oh, you know what? I'll just wait here on the sidelines. You know, I'll just drink my second Kool-Aid on the sidelines and watch how Mike Grinder really stands up for all of us. We were so abused, you guys. We're so misunderstood. These kids that were literally violated, that were raped, um, are just so messed up now. You know, sucks to be them. I wouldn't wish that. And, you know, I can see how bad it would feel to be them. About this even or say anything about it. But, you know, I told the detective that spoke to me last week and the other detective in Australia, I said, even after all this had blown up with the down the rabbit hole and whatever, I said, if there is anything that I can do to help, please reach out. If there is anything, if you are trying to find other documents, please let me know. I am happy to help. I will help until the end of time. If please don't help. Nobody needs your help. With people like you helping and sabotaging at the same time, you know what? Stay off the cases. Stay away from all of us. 
Don't come anywhere near us, Mike Rinder. We wouldn't want to have anything to do with you. You're so disgusting and lying and pathetic and just whatever, just whatever comes out of your mouth. You don't think you're going to get called out by the kids that saw this? We're not playing a game. Other kids are being abused in the exact same way we got abused. As we speak, Mike Rinder, that's why it matters. I know that might not register to you, but that's the only reason that it matters, that more SA of children continues to be covered up by y'all. You walked out of a hotel and did what? Talk to all your BS buddies in the media that did you a solid to launder your image. If that is what's necessary, because I believe that this man should be prosecuted and must be prosecuted, and that it is for the good not only of Miriam, but every other potential victim that may be out there. Um, I don't know. I'm rambling now, John, so I'm no, going to shut up. No. Yeah, you are rambling because Miriam's dad literally admitted that on the phone, Mike Rinder. Miriam's dad literally said what he did on a phone call. That's a lot more than can be said about you. You haven't admitted to shit. Every time you open your mouth is to purport that you want to help, but you're helping nobody but yourself. That's your go-to. That's your MO. That's all that's on the public record that can literally be seen. I mean, any idiot should be able to connect that dot. But apparently there is a crisis, you guys, breaking news. There's a crisis of critical thinking skills in attorneys and in reporters. Imagine that. There's a crisis of critical thinking skills by detectives, by the Clearwater Police, by the LAPD. None of them seem to have a shred of critical thinking skills, cannot pull a single string, cannot figure out anything. They're so confused. They've been told this is very religious. And you know what? They can't do anything about it because it's very religious. What in the hell goes on in those hotels? Is it, though? It's absolutely pertinent. What Everything you've said is pertinent. Um and there, there is a lot in there to, to sort of walk back to the start of the statement of why didn't you know? Well, there are hundreds of Scientology organizations. And um, there, there is this, you know, after the fall of the Guardian's office and the harassment division, branch one, um, overt data collection, what a lovely title that is. Data collection. And <laughs> look at Mike Rinder's Buddha mode. Smiling after he gets told data collection. I mean, literally, what are you... Didn't you just tell us, Mike Rinder, that you didn't know anything and that you couldn't have been more clueless? I mean, this is what we're talking about. This is literally what we're talking about, you guys. Um... This is the John Eastgate, the Jen Eastgate denial from Mike Rinder that is smelling like a rat. I mean, allegedly he had no clue. Allegedly he got no reports. Allegedly he had no access to a shred of file. Allegedly there was no video recording. Allegedly there was no ethics cycle. Allegedly there was nothing that Scientology is when it came to covering up that crime. So, yes, we're pushing back on that ridiculous. BS, Mike Rinder, because it's giving that, you know, you must have known. You must have known something. You must have known about more kids. Where is your advocacy for kids that are stuck inside of that hotel as we speak? Where is you really calling yourself out for all the disgusting things that you normalize on an industrial size scale? Because you're not coming clean. Your needle is dirty as fuck. And every single day, we're going to continue to advocate for all the kids that have been ensnared inside those disgusting hotels. We would know we were ensnared ourselves as kids. 
Imagine at my age right now, you were still there doing all this criminal activity. Imagine at my age right now, you were still seven years away from ever leaving because then you were going to be put on a trailer by a midget and then that was going to make you really get pressed. Pam is, I'm a bit behind, but I thought Rinder exited that group and was fighting against all of that in addition to him admitting he did wrongs too. Yes, Pames, but you know what? He keeps admitting to all manner of Q-rated wrongs that he did do. And he keeps playing convenience and nihilism for all the criminal acts committed against children. His advocacy for children has been abysmal. So it matters what you're coming clean on. If all he's calling out is, oh, fair game, you guys, adults and adults are having a real hard time then that's going to get called out. It's the year 2024. There's no guardrails set up to protect a shred of child inside of those hotels. And if you look at the advocacy that this man has put out there, it doesn't raise a single red flag in terms of protection to children. So yes, it's not good enough. Whatever in the hell he says he came clean on, well, you know what? He wasn't coming clean on this other entire thing. And since they did train us as children to investigate and to pull strings, here we are pulling the strings that no one is bothering to pull because everyone's going with the pitch of whatever Papa Smurf said with his little smiley face and all this horrible body language that shows he doesn't give an F about what we were put through. And he'll just literally lie his way through an interview to continue to cleanse his image as if as if he's not going to get called out. So, yeah. He points a finger at everyone else. All that happened occurred while he was handling the Lisa McPherson scandal. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I thought the Clearwater Police were on Scientology's payroll. Yeah, Pam, we've, we've shown that receipt that they do get paid. You know, the receipt where literally contact person, Mike, Rinder. So, Mike Rinder, you were there setting up all of the relationships with the police. Imagine that you are a police whisperer, you are a lawyer whisperer, and you are a media whisperer. And imagine all of these idiots with no critical thinking skills can smell the rat that is you, cannot smell all your criminal activity that they're clueless about and then just eat and regurgitate whatever in the hell you tell them. Literally. They're speaking and stutters trying to think would be implications if they speak it. Very true. It was very, very stuttery, the whole thing. Why are the Tatans still talking with him? All of the victims need to tell the police to not discuss their case with him. Yeah, because at the time, he inserted himself in all the cases, you guys. He's inserted himself in all the legal matters he can get his hands on, purporting he really wants to help. But imagine that there's no evidence that he's actually helping other than himself. So, yeah, I mean, think going forward, no one should literally be calling on him because watch out. That's the vibe. So I get like pity instead of remorse. Wild. I mean, literally. Literally what Greg said. <laughs> Welcome to Spin Cycle. Exactly. Spin, spin, sugar. It's all we get, you guys. I mean, spin, spin, spin. I'm not sure that the billionaire contract has been tested in the courts. It seems completely unenforceable along with the freeloader debt. I don't think anybody's attacking. Yeah.
Well, this is what you were saying, Little Green. Scientology is akin to private assisted living facility from a legal perspective. Those billion year contracts are akin to power of attorney. I mean, yeah, I mean, they have even this like horrific, disgusting conservatorship, illegal conservatorship, because they do take power over every ounce of your life. You're literally a pawn in a scheme. So, yeah, I mean, the courts are going to side with it until the courts don't side with it because the courts have literal blood on their hands. All of what happened to us as kids has been supported and endorsed by the courts. This is legal malfeasance at its best. You can have a set of rules that says it's illegal to child traffic kids. And then all of a sudden, kids are being trafficked and the courts are finding million ways to, you know, legal schmeagel their way out of it. Oh, and this is the other thing. I just disagree that we already have laws to address it like the Jody Hildebrand case. Scientology is different than Jody. Yeah, it is and it isn't, Little Green. I mean, I understand that there are aspects of the Jody Hildebrand situation that are different, but, you know, we were locked up in rooms against our will for hours on end, strapped to a machine that we couldn't even move. We were effectively handcuffed to that machine. We couldn't literally even go to the bathroom until we were allowed. So there's a lot of parallels and that's what we're calling out, the disgusting role plays and what happens to you when these adults are role playing with you. Because that's what Scientology is. Scientology is those audits. All of Scientology can be summarized into audits. And if in the audits you're being held against your will, that's already a crime. That's already a felony to be held against your will. And no child could have been literally capable of consenting to be role played like that. So it's, it's having to get into the real weeds of what Scientology is in it of itself. And like, my point is that there has been a lot of laws that already say it's illegal to take someone's passport. It's illegal to hold someone against their will. It's illegal to, you know, ask children to, self-incriminate and pretend that they are part of the abuse cycle of including but not limited to getting raped. I mean, what type of legal religion situation is that? You know, they're on a league of their own, you guys. And yeah, there's very, very specific things to call out. And the more that we understand what is being called out and what's being literally questioned, the better children inside of these disgusting hotels will be able to be like, okay, you know, like people will have to intervene. We need intervention. These people cannot be just left to their own devices if they're abusing kids. That's what's unacceptable. That's what was done with us. Imagine when we were there, nobody was advocating for us. Nobody was saying a shred of a thing. Everybody was confused AF because Mike Rinder was out there being the L1 Harvard PPRO putting up all manner of disgusting BS to confuse everyone and to make it look like, well, you know, maybe he's, maybe they're onto something. Who are we to judge? Well, you know what? We're to judge the unacceptable systemic trafficking of minors across state lines, across countries at an industrial size scale. So the more you know, the more you can advocate effectively. The more we literally confront and have these horrible, horrible conversations that are unimaginable, but how are we going to ever get anywhere if these facts aren't confronted on their face? If we're not able to push back to what has literally perpetuated the cycle of abuse over and over and over. And again, the only people that matter advocating for is kids ensnared with these people. I wish someone would have come and literally had taken all minors out of the hotel and said, nope, breaking news, you can't employ any of these children. They have to go have a life. That would have been a start 
for us to not be literally drawn and literally continue to be abused because nobody knows what to advocate. Nobody knows what it is. But I mean, all of you guys do know now and all of these protests that are being you know, had where people are literally being confronted on the facts and what matters, what should, what they should be gaining conscience over. I mean, this is a, we're doing you a favor, Scientology people. Consider this a favor to y'all. If you didn't know, now you do know. If you didn't get told that Owen Hubbard was a convicted felon because Mike Winder was too busy getting a woman out of Australia with three underage kids trafficked over to America to go do that job for free for him because they wouldn't pay her, then there. Now you do know that he was a convicted felon. Now you do know that you need to double check what in the hell you are doing and agreeing to do inside of those hotels. Stop asking for approval of people that do work inside of a com literal hotel or commercial building, whichever one they can prop up. I mean, usually the hotels are for when they really want you to stay there at Flag or in Los Angeles, but, you know, all of these centers are recruitment centers and snaring centers. And if adults want to get involved in it, no comment couldn't give less of a literal shred of an F. If adults are bringing their kids, then we go from zero to 100 real MF quick because they are the ones that need to be saved. They are the ones that need to have advocates saying, no, you don't do that. No, you don't get to lock them up. No, you don't get to interrogate them and ask them sadistic, disgusting questions. No, that's none of your goddamn business. But as long as they're making net their business, then it's going to be our business to call it out and to ruthlessly call it out. We don't give an F. All Scientology parents, you are all in the same bucket. I don't give an F if you left. I don't give an F if you went. I don't. Did you ensnare children in this child trafficking operation? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, then you're in that bucket. Are children still being child trafficked as we speak? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, then consider that bucket more solid. Because that's what all Scientology parents need to come to terms with. You're no different than the ones that were stuck in there right now. In fact, you owe them to figure out how to get them out of whatever in the hell they're doing. That would be great for all ex Scientology parents to figure out your messaging, to figure out your protesting, to figure out how in the literal hell you're going to make it stop. Because it shouldn't just be up to the kids that were ensnared and bamboozled and scammed and trafficked and raped to now do it all. Because that's what these adults are expecting. And yes, that includes Mike Rinder as he sits there being the most inefficient advocate of the century, Mike Rinder. It's called incorrect estimation of effort. It's either the hotels are not a child trafficking ring and we're completely out of our mind or you don't give an F and you keep talking about all these whitewashing BS points to clutter the airwaves with BS. I completely agree on horrible crimes that have been still committing these horrible crimes against kids today. That's right, Virginia. It's the fact that it's still being done. It's the fact that it's being covered up. It's the fact that it's being audited. It's the fact that it's being video recorded. It's the fact that it's being transcribed. It's the fact that they're writing reports about it. It's the fact that they're CCing the entire command chain of executives that all want to find out what happened, what came up in that session. Can you CC me on it? I mean, that's the level of complicity these people have, you guys. Nobody thought, oh, don't, don't tell me. I don't want to know. They wanted to know. They wanted to know. They wanted to know because that's what made them think that they were so important. Imagine being that ridiculously stupid that you want to get in on criminal information so that you can then pervert justice, sabotage everything for the victim, and, you know, 
with a full straight face pitch that you're saving a world and that, that that's why you're involved here. So I really want to thank all of you for again, listening and understanding what we're up against. And yes, we are a tiny, tiny little group of us that are having these very difficult conversations in this space, but I really appreciate your bandwidth to sit here and analyze and hear us out because for our entire lives, we haven't been heard for our entire lives. We've been told that it's all our fault that we were enslaved, that it was all our fault that we were recruited to data mine and launder images, launder images and crimes for self-admitted felons. Why were we brought into this country to do that? That's a question for the IRS. That's a question for the LAPD. And that is a question for the Clearwater Police Literal Department. Why are children being brought into this country to data mine felonies out of adults? So I'll let you know if they answer anything about that. So I really want to thank all of you for listening and holding space. And we will continue. Continue moving every day until there are no more kids in Scientology because kids cannot literally consent. Duh. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.